Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kage Kaze, and you might have recently seen my video regarding Tales of Fantasia and the recent release of a translation patch by Fantasian Productions. And watching this, you might have thought to yourself, hey, that's pretty cool. I would really like to try this out. Then you might be thinking, well, hey, I've got a PlayStation, but it's kind of dusty. Maybe it doesn't even work anymore. Or maybe you have an issue where your PlayStation isn't modded and you don't want to go through the effort or the cost in order to modify your PlayStation to get it to play these foreign games. Well, you're in luck. Thanks to computers and emulation, we can get this game to run for you and you don't need a PlayStation. Now, there's a couple things I'm going to tell you here that I cannot help you with. The first is I cannot help you find a Tales of Fantasia game or an image. You need to get the game either by, of course, purchasing the disc or finding one online. Once you've purchased the disc, you need to be able to dump the disc onto your computer in either a Q format or a bin format. For the purpose of this video, I will be using the bin format. The other thing I cannot help you with is finding a PlayStation 1 BIOS ROM. The BIOS ROM is essential as it controls the input, the output, all that wonderful stuff of a PlayStation. And the PlayStation emulators do not come with this preloaded. So you're going to have to find that. Those are the two things that, honestly, please don't ask because I won't be able to tell you. But once you find those, you're going to be fine because I'm going to tell you how to do everything else from this point on. So let's start off here. We're at the T Fantasian Productions page. And I'd just like to point out that uh, this has been 12 years of hard work that they've done for this game. I'm just going to real quick show you this from their own website. There are many, 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 many people involved with this project, and they have done a fantastic job. So I really think uh, this is just a, a fantastic piece of work. 12 years, honestly, is a long time to put into a project like this. So once you're at this page, all you have to do is click on the link here that says get it here. This is pre-V1.1. This is a minor fix patch. It fixes a couple cases where text was repeating itself when, sh when it shouldn't have, really. So you're going to download the patch by clicking here. And once you've got that, you're going to need an emulator. So you're going to want to go here. This is epsxe.com. epsxe is probably the best PlayStation emulator I've ever used. And that was before it got updated. EPSXE was updated just on November 9th. So the, this is the most up-to-date and the best, I believe the most compatible emulator that is out there right now. Please, if you see what I see here, do not click on this big download button. This is actually a AdSense Google Ad uh, button here. You want to actually go to the download section and download 1.8.0. Once you've done that, you're going to need a couple things because it does not come with plugins. You're going to need a graphics plugin and you're going to need a sound plugin. Before they used to include the basic packages. For some reason, this pack this download does not include those packages, but they're easy enough to get. Simply click on the forum link here. And, of course, you're going to you know, read the rules and agree to them, and you're going to enter the message board. In the message board is a wonderful sticky thread here. It says, need help with EPSXE? This is your first stop. And, yes, indeed, this will be your first stop. This is going to have everything you're going to need to know, including general troubleshooting, where to get your plugins, etc., etc. All right, so if you go into the plugins post it will give you a link to two different web pages and I'm going to recommend that you go to both. You have the EMU forums download section and Pete's domain. Let's start with Pete's. So what you're going to do is come into Pete's domain and go over to the PSX GPU and the PSX SPU. This is for the graphics and the sound plugins respectively. What you will want is Pete's PopS Soft GPU for Windows and his OpenGL, this one right here, the one at the top, Pete's OpenGL 2 PSX GPU. These are the most up-to-date versions. You can see they haven't been updated in a few years, but they are perfectly fine. 
With that, you'll also want to go into the SPU plugins and grab his D-Sound PSX SPU. The other thing you'll want is on the EMU forums page here, scroll down to the, whoops, maybe not scroll down, right there at the top, go into PlayStation, and what you'll want from here is the SPU plugins. You're going to want Eternal. Just go down here, there it is. Eternal SPU 141. Grab that as well. There's a reason for this. I've told you to download two different sound packages and two different graphical packages, and you'll see why here in a moment. Once you've got all that, you want to extract your EPSXE into a folder like so, and uh, you'll of course want to put your BIOS in a BIOS folder here. You will actually want to name it BIOS because EPSXE picks that up. Put your BIOSes in here, and of course inside the plugins folder is where you're going to extract all of your plugins. Now when you load EPSXE for the first time, bringing that in a frame here, you will get a configuration wizard. You can actually, anytime you cancel that wizard, you can go to config and wizard guide. It'll bring it right up. All right, first you need to select your BIOS. Again, I cannot help you find that. Once you've selected your BIOS, it's going to ask you to configure the video. This is where the two different plugins come in. You can use either POP Soft Driver 118 or the OpenGL Driver 2.9. Uh, the soft driver is purely software emulation based. It will play the games much like a PlayStation would. It's going to be purely just driven to your screen with no 3D graphic enhancements. The OpenGL driver will use your cards, your graphic cards, to smooth out the edges, apply anti-aliasing, and it will make the 3D graphics um, appear smoother and better, you know, they will look more like more modern games because they'll be using more modern um, graphics processes. You can configure it and for my computer, my computer is fairly beefy, uh, not the best, definitely not the worst, and I just come in here and I click on the nice default setting down here in the lower left hand corner. Everything here is set to look the nicest that it can. You really don't need a super strong PC to do this either. If you have a hard time playing the game though, you might want to come down and pick the fast rather than the nice. Once you've picked which uh, defaults you want, you can tweak the settings here on each individual level. But after that, you're going to want to choose your resolution and your mode. You can go into full screen, you can go into windowed. I'm doing windowed 800 by 600 for this. You can pick whatever resolution you want. Once you're done here, click the OK button and click Next. Here is the sound, and again, we've got two different plugins. Why did I tell you to use two different plugins? Well, because it really depends on what kind of sound experience you want. From my research, I've heard that the PEOPS D Sound Audio Driver Direct Sound 1.9 is the best. Mainly being because I've heard that it has a better, um, is a better interpolation driver for reverb. Alright, so by default, this is what you get. You get high compatibility mode, medium, uh, best quality reverb, but you get Gaussian interpolation. Tales of Fantasia does not play nice with Gaussian interpolation it will cause massive echo on lines that are not meant to echo. At least that's what I've noticed when I did the sound test. I would recommend switching it over to cubic interpolation. This seems to cause fewer issues with Tales of Fantasia and will still get you the sound experience that you want. Now here's the downside. Whereas Piop's Direct Sound Driver may be the best one considered right now, it has a problem with Tales of Fantasia and every version I played, either Absolute Zeros, the original Japanese version, or Fantasian Productions. In the game, there are skits you can get by pressing the select button, and these skits are pretty much portraits that pop up, the characters talk to each other, and thanks to the translation patch, you get uh, subtitles there. Well, they appear to be linked to the sound drivers in some way, because it, using this sound driver here, the skits will not actually show the mouth flaps. The mouths will not appear to move. You'll see the portraits, you'll still see the subtitles, and you'll get the sound, but you can't actually see the lips moving. Now, this is not really a major problem, which is why I say you can do this. But if you're not very good at picking out different Japanese voices, you may not want to use this, as it can be harder to tell who's actually talking. I honestly recommend the Eternal SPU 141. This will give you really good sound and will allow everything to work properly. I have not changed any of these settings. It's on the default. And once you've picked your driver, you simply hit Next. 
Here at the CD-ROM, I honestly couldn't tell you which one of these is better than the other. I haven't looked into it much because I'm using an ISO. This is mostly for configuring your actual CD-ROM for picking out PlayStation discs that you put into your computer. So you may want to go ahead and use the default here. I have not downloaded any additional drivers. This came with the actual emulator. So pick the one you want, and then you can move on to configuring your controls. Simply uh, click the controller that you want, and uh, it recognizes pretty much whatever you have plugged into Windows. So you can configure this any way you want. You can uh, configure it to use the dual shock, dual analog, um, use mouse as analog, anything you want. I've been using the dual shock because I have a PS3 controller, and it can pretty much do everything that the dual shock can do. Obviously, it's a dual shock 3 compared to a dual shock 2. You can even configure rumbling devices here. Uh, I use the DX Joy 1 and I've been using Constant. Uh, I couldn't tell you if Sign is better or not. I've just heard that Constant was one of the best ways to go and I've gone with it and it's been fine. Um, I just run into maybe some issues where the rumble isn't as strong as I would like, but I could always try and get software to tweak that. That's not a big deal. So we're just going to go ahead and get out of that. You select that and you hit next and hey, you are done enjoy your emulator so once you've got the emulator configured and set up and you've got your game well the next thing you need to do is patch your game right because you've got as of right now you've got the Japanese version you want the English version so let's go in here I've got my little Tales of Fantasia patch directory here and these are all the files you're going to need first of all you're going to need your game image which is in this demonstration in bind format uh, in bin format here and you're going to need the patch so let's go ahead and do this like we uh, would try to patch the game we're going to take the fixed version that they have on the website here we're going to extract that and uh, we're, we've got X Delta that's already extracted here into this UI it's very straightforward to use we're just going to go ahead and go in here double click on X Delta let's bring this into frame very good so for patch, well, you simply click open and navigate to the directory that your patch is in and cl double click on your X Delta patch. And the source file is the game image that you have. So I'm going to pick my top.bin or bin. Uh, output file is whatever you want it to be. Okay. Uh, you may want to rename it something else other than the original image though. So this is going to just be top patch. I'm going to click save and then I click the patch button. Now, if there's a problem, you'll get an error, and there it is. This is the most common error. Target window checks some mismatch, invalid input. Now, what this means is that the version of the game you have is wrong. And to clear that up, it means that you don't have the exact same version that Kles has when he made this patch. Now, this can happen for several reasons. Maybe you went out, you downloaded it, and you've got a bad dump, or uh, maybe... Uh, it just wasn't the right version. For example, the actual CD. Let's say you have the actual CD in your hand and you're putting in, it's like, wait, this is the actual game. Why am I having this hard time? Because you can have this problem with that. Well, there's multiple versions. There is the original release version, and I do believe there is a PlayStation the best version out there. And when these games are released, there's really no difference in the game itself. They haven't updated the game. But for some reason, the game's files are recorded in such a way that it looks different to X to the X Delta system. See, X Delta requires them to be exact duplicates of each other. This means if there's uh, something wrong, a bit in the wrong place, whatever, it's not going to work. So the game is good, but X Delta doesn't like it. So what do we do to fix that? Well, on the Fantasian Productions website, if I scroll down a bit here, you will see that they have a click here for patching instructions and this takes you to a forum post that gives you all the information you need here you will see if it's a bad dump download this follow include instructions how to use okay you click that and what it's going to give you is uh, this this is the tales of fantasia iso repair i'm going to go ahead and extract it here there you go you can see i have a whole bunch of files here and so you want to double click the how to use. This is going to tell you exactly what to do, honestly. It's very straightforward. All right, so copy your original unmodified disk image into this directory, same directory that the repair is in. And you have to rename your file to Tales of Fantasia. So honestly, all you have to do is highlight it, 
and copy this. All right, you need to name your disk image to the exact same thing. So let's go down here to my Tales of Fantasia, and then I'm just going to paste. There you go, Tales of Fantasia J. Oh, it even included the .bin. Let's get rid of that. All right, there you go. It's named exactly what it needs to be named, right? So let's bring up this, and now we all have to do is repair .bat. So let's go ahead and run that now. And as you can see, it automatically loads everything you need. And it will go through the disk and it will repair it so that it is the exact version that you need. Now, that process does not take long at all, but of course I did speed it up in order to facilitate this video. Once you're done, you simply press any key and it goes away. So at this point now, you just need to go back into your X Delta. I obviously have to choose a new source file because there is, of course, a different version of the game. It actually modified the original version, so I select what I renamed it to, Tales of Fantasia J, hit open. Everything is still set up. This is T.O.P patch we're just going to call it that top patch dot bin oh okay already got a name so just call it demo there we go makes it easy click patch and unfortunately you don't get any notification that it's doing anything of course you can see now here i've got the little hourglass or circle a circle there and there you go file patched successfully once you've done that, honestly, you're good to go. All you have to do now is go into your EPSXE, and uh, you can basically burn the image back to a disk, and you can run it from CD-ROM if you want, or you can simply run the ISO directly from the emulator. And see here, I can just select it. Boom. And there you go. Tales of Fantasia, patched into English, running on your PC. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to playing this, honestly. This, again, has been 12 years of work for the team at Fantasia Productions. And hopefully this has gotten you interested into trying the game. And this is a fantastic solution for not having to dust off your PlayStation. I have my PlayStation sitting right now, kind of uh, tucked away, gathering dust. And it is modded, too. But it's a lot of work to try and pull it out and then, of course, get it hooked up to my system that's already kind of filled up with consoles at the moment. So I'm really glad to have emulation for this. Uh, not only that, but with emulation, you actually have a few things to make your life easier. You know, if you're not looking for the hardcore experience and you want to speed up your gaming uh, experience for these old games, the, you have the ability to turn off the throttling so you can make the game run faster, so you can get past things that take long. For example, if you want to level quickly, you can speed the game up uh, by enabling the turbo mode and things like that to get things going. Uh, at least I do that with PlayStation 2 games. I can't say that I know a way to do that with uh, PlayStation 1 games, but there are still save states and things like that, so you can save your game at certain points if you're not sure something's going to happen right, um, and it makes it a little easier. So emulation's been great for going back and playing old games and uh, making them a little bit easier if I want to just experience them rather than worry about pure difficulty. Uh, only really do that for things that I really want to experience the story. If it's something I really want difficulty on, I don't mess with save states, but there you go. They're there if you need them. So hopefully you guys enjoy the game. Hopefully this has been a very straightforward and easy to understand tutorial. If you have questions regarding it, again, please no questions on where to obtain the BIOS or where to obtain uh, the actual game itself, I will probably just direct you to Google or to Amazon or some other site, maybe even eBay. I've heard the game actually props, uh, pops up quite a bit uh, on those sites lately uh, for reasonable prices, so you'll have to look for those yourself. All right, thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you next time.